Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we shall be asking and answering one simple question. What is the best loadout for your Imperial Guard Hellhound? This armoured vehicle is an iconic one of the Guard motor pool. And it's a venerable old beast as well. It's been around a long time. We've had Hellhounds in the Guard as long as I can remember. Starting off with the one that had the metal bits, the metal fuel tanks that you stuck on the side. It kind of felt like an upgrade kit for the regular Chimera. And then you had the Artemis pattern one from Forge with the big fuel tank on the back. And now we've got the relatively new plastic kit. But... Because the Hellhound's been around a while, it does have a few different weapon options. And either as a veteran or as a noob, it can be difficult to know what you give this vehicle. Do you stick with the traditional flamer base loadout? Or are you going to be thinking outside of the box and thinking about melter cannons or chem cannons? Well, never fear for Mordian Glory is here. I'm going to take you through step by step what my recommended loadout for the Hellhound is in 10th edition and that's our mission briefing for today's video so you know what boys there's no point in messing around let's mount up roll out and dive right into today's video So the first thing that I want to do is briefly go over the weapon options available to the Hellhound. As standard, it comes equipped with a heavy flamer, an inferno cannon and armoured tracks. The model's inferno cannon can be replaced with a chem cannon or a melter cannon. And the model's heavy flamer can be replaced with a heavy bolter or a multi-melter. You can also take a free hunter killer missile. But what's important to note here, this is one of the few guard tracked vehicles that can't take something like a heavy stubber or a storm bolter. Now, the whole weapon, the heavy bolter, the heavy flamer, the multi-melter, they're all standard issue, exactly the same as you would find elsewhere in the guard. So, for example, the heavy flamer ignores cover, torrent, 12-inch range, D6 shots, strength 5, AP-1, 1 damage, heavy bolter, 36-inch range, sustained hits 1, 3 shots, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength 5, AP-1, 2 damage, and for the sake of completeness, the multi-melter. Melter 2, 18-inch range, 2 shots, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength 9, AP-4, D6 damage. However, the turret weapons are what is unique to the Hellhound. They're the bespoke weapon system for this vehicle. The Inferno Cannon is the traditional one, and it comes with Ignore's Cover and Torrent, as you would expect for a lot of Flamer weapons. It's got an 18-inch range. It fires 2d6 shots. Its Blizzard skill is NA, because it auto hits, because it's a Torrent weapon. It's Strength 6, AP-2, and Damage 1. The Chem Cannon leans more towards the anti-heavy infantry. It's got anti-infantry 2+, plus, which really helps just dealing with anything that's normally very tough, like custodies or terminators. It torrents or auto-hits. It's only got a 12-inch range, and it only fires D6 plus 1 shots. Its ballistic skill is NA because it auto-hits. It's strength 2, but you don't really worry about that because it's anti-infantry 2+, plus and Really, you want to be shooting it at infantry. It's AP minus two and it's two damage. So it could pass into the Hellhound. It's less range, less shots, but more damage, same AP. Then we get to the Melter Cannon. And this is on the other end of the spectrum. It's not focused on killing light infantry, heavy infantry. This is more of a, well, in theory, a tank buster. It's Blast and Melter 4. So if you get it within nine inch range, it's doing four extra damage with its melter that's tasty 18 inch range d3 shots ballistic skill four plus strength nine so the higher strength weapon on the turret ap minus four and d6 damage now that we know what all the different weapon systems are let's start thinking about how we can combine them into an effective loadout in the past pretty much for every edition the traditional loadout of the Hellhound has been the Inferno Cannon and the Heavy Flamer. And for good reason. 
This allows the Hellhound to put out a lot of auto hitting shots at a good strength, a decent AP, and it just makes the Hellhound ideal for flushing out light infantry and for just going after those weaker units that your enemy might have. Maybe he's got a small five-man unit sitting on an objective. Maybe he's got something that's trying to sneak around, start trying to score on some secondaries. The Hellhound can be a bit of a lone wolf. It can go down a flank and it can just start burning stuff. And that is still a very valid loadout. And I would say if you have a lot of Hellhounds and you like running them in the Burninator 9000 configuration, then go for it. That's absolutely fine. And it's still totally viable. Attention Guardsmen, this is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off full action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Oh, Mordian Glory, you've just made a Hellhound video to tell us to take all the flame ones. What a masterful insight you have. Hang on, cynical viewer, because I'm going to hit you with some knowledge. I don't think that the traditional loadout is the best loadout in 10th edition. I think it's fine, but if you want to squeeze every bit of efficiency, you need to start thinking differently. I know the Adeptus Mechanicus will probably serve it to me, lobotomize me, but it doesn't matter. You've got to be thinking outside the box. I think that in this current meta, where vehicles are everywhere and light infantry is a rare sight indeed, that the Flamer variant just doesn't quite pack the punch that it needs to. It can still do the lone wolf going down the flank tactics, but... 40k is becoming smaller and smaller. And I don't mean the number of models, I mean the boards. And so going down a flank is a little bit tricky. And so I feel like the Hellhound can still do those lone wolf tactics, but it needs to also be able to just get stuck in and get in the fight. And as a result, I think that you need a vehicle with a bit more punch. There aren't as much infantry around, there are more vehicles around, and sometimes you just need to win that firefight. So I think that now is the time of the Devil Dog. And you might be thinking, what the hell is a Devil Dog more doing? If you're new to 9th and 10th, then the Devil Dog doesn't mean anything to you. It's what the Hellhound used to be called. It was a variant of the chassis when you gave it all the Melter. So I think the Melter Cannon and the Multi Melter in the hull is the way to go. Now let me explain why. Firstly... Strength 9, whilst not ideal, does actually have a good chance of wounding a vehicle. You can fish for those 5s and 6s. The Inferno Cannon can wound on 5s and 6s against light and medium vehicles. But the moment you start getting into the heavier armor, it's wounding on 6s and that's just, that's just a recipe for just not getting the dice that you need. AP-2 with Ignore's Cover is alright. But you know what's better? AP minus four. Do you know why? Because that also cuts through cover. But also if the enemy stood out in the open, it's AP minus four. It's double the AP of the Inferno Cannon. So I think the strength is significant and I think the AP is significant. Most importantly, I think the damage is where it's at. You need that D6 and the Melter four gives you that reliability. The fact that you can roll a one on your damage and still do five damage to your opponent is wild. A couple of melter shots get past the enemy. On average, you're popping a medium vehicle. Anything up to and including Lehman Russes are going to go down if the melter cannon gets a couple of shots through. But here's the thing. Here's the controversial take. I think that the melter cannon is better anti-infantry than the inferno cannon. I know. Ho, ho, ho. I am dropping a bomb right there. Maybe this is going to be too spicy of a take, but bear with me. Sure, on paper, the Melter Cannon only gets D3 shots, but it's got blast. So if you shoot it into a big unit, 
a big horde unit, something like a 20-man blob of Termagant or a 20-man blob of Necron Warriors, it's going to get plus four shots. It's going to get an average of six shots. And you know what? The Inferno Cannon, 2d6, it's very swingy. If you shoot that weapon into a big horde, maybe it gets an average of seven, maybe it gets two. The Melt Cannon is more reliable on its number of shots when shooting into hordes because of Blast. Blast is best. Now, sure, you do have to hit, but with Take Aim flying around the place, you get your six shots off, you're going to get four hits. Against pretty much any infantry, you're going to get four wounds because you're winning on twos. If they haven't got an invulnerable save, that those four wounds go straight foot through and you're probably going to kill four infantry. You flip that over to the Inferno Cannon, and that's four of almost any infantry, by the way. Let's be clear here. Because of the damage and the melter, that's four of any infantry. Multi-wound or not. Space Marine, Guardsman, Termigan. That's four of any infantry just gone. You go over to the Inferno Cannon, and it's going to have seven shots. It's going to hit with all of them. It's going to wound on threes against most infantry. Most infantry's toughness four. So you're going to get four wounds. Then it's only AP minus two. Now, if you're shooting against light infantry, that's four kills. Okay, fair enough. But if you're shooting it against something that's slightly tougher, or there's an invulnerable save involved, it's going to drop down. But to be fair, so with the Inferno Cannon, but here's the difference. So with the Melter Cannon, but here's the difference. The Melter Cannon can still damage vehicles, as we just said. The Inferno Cannon can't. So this is why I think the Melter Cannon is actually the go-to. This is why I think it's the top loadout. Because not only can it Barney with tanks a bit, it's fishing for fives, but it can do it. Not only can it Barney with heavy armor, it can wound medium armor, and it can happily deal with heavy infantry, so it's doing the chem cannon job better, it's doing its tank busting job well, but it can also deal with hordes because it's got blast. So in conclusion, what I'm saying is that the traditional Hellhound loadout is fine, but the best one for 10th edition is Melter Cannon, Multi Melter, and Hunter Killer Missile. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree that the time of the Inferno Cannon has passed or are you a staunch logisticist that will still take all the flame weapons on your Hellhound? If you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, 
August Vardy and the Tommies. Thank you guys, your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now, thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>